Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I thought I'd do another one of those State of the Harvest tours. Uh, first weekend every month I'm trying to stick to this uh, thing. We just do a short tour of the garden showing what I'm actually pulling out of the garden right now at this time of year. So let's go have a look. All right, well, here we are at the entrance of the garden and uh, this is the last of my gar garlic scapes. These, these garlic are a bit behind the rest of them because there's a, you know, big, there's some trees and stuff here that just cast shade. You know, this is an area outside my garden where these are sort of like, kind of like compost bins, but not exactly. They're hugelkultur beds and I throw yard waste in them and I take soil of them from time to time. Uh, but anyway, um, I grow things in here that deer generally don't eat. Garlic's one of those things. These were about a week behind the other ones, but they're they're ready to harvest now. Once you, once you see a full circle, they're ready to snap off. You just snap them off like that. You can use them and use them as a garlic to substitute. You just dice them up and throw them in whenever you're cooking. If you need garlic, use these instead. They're like maybe half the strength of garlic. Um, I like to make a kind of garlic paste or a pesto out of these because you can store it in the freezer and use it later. Here we are in the garden. Uh, the lettuce is pretty much done. I've planted some beans in this bed just to you know, a bush bean to get something out of it. Uh, as usual, I got herbs and uh, French sorrel, which is bolting like crazy. I mean, I keep taking these uh, flowers off and they keep reappearing. I don't want those seeds everywhere. I uh, certainly, you know, I got the French sorrel and the uh, bloody dock. And uh, I would say I have too much of that growing here. I think that garden there along the wall, <laughs> is all that you need. Maybe even just two plants is probably all you need. It's not a particularly um, tasty, it's not succulent or anything. It's not like spinach or kale or anything like that. It's bitter to the taste. It's good to add to things. So I def this is too much. Uh, I'd say for the average person, maybe three plants would be all you'd need. <laughs> they're, they're really small. They're, this is their second year here. They're perennial. And they're quite small the first years, and, and you don't taste them the first year. So I didn't know what these tasted like. I, I thought they were better tasting, let's put it that way. They're bitter, they're, they're good, they're very early, and they stick around till very late. Um, but they're, um, yeah, it's sort of, you know, acidic tasting, kind of bitter tasting. Uh, you don't need this much. <laughs> That's the, the short version. Uh, over here I got some, uh, this is again lettuce that I planted like, in March, in the end of March under a dome, I moved it to here. Um, there's a couple I can harvest. I'll probably harvest the last of these for lunch, but most of them are bolting. And I'm gonna, because this lettuce did so well and self-seeded so well, I mean, I literally just scattered the seeds on a bed, put a plastic dome over it like the last week of March. And then when I lifted the dome off a month later, there was lettuce everywhere. <laughs> then I just moved it to different parts of the garden and used that bed for something else. Um, so I'm gonna let these go to seed. See the way they look right now? Right, right. This here is a nice, nice head. You could cut that off and use it for a salad. And it's a delicious lettuce. Um, but these here are definitely bolting. And this is an open pollinated variety. I don't know if it's heirloom, but it's certainly open pollinated. So you can save the seeds. So I'm just going to let this run its course and save all those seeds because I'm totally happy with this lettuce. It's great. Um, I planted some spinach here to get some spinach. That's growing great. It's been really weird uh, late spring early summer so far um, you know it's uh, probably 16 degrees outside right now and overcast I'm not using my regular camera setup because it's, it's kind of raining right now um, but uh, anyway um, yeah I got some nice spinach here uh, the kale is doing great I had a kind of a pest problem I had a rabbit in here but I think uh, I've solved that problem <laughs> so um, this this kale is doing great. You can see this one had been chewed down to next to nothing as the rabbit would basically attack the edge of the garden, <laughs> right? Uh, there was spinach going down the middle of that, but it's gone. So now it's just two different kinds of kale. This kale still needs to be thinned out a little bit. Um, you, you know, one kale plant every 16 inches is about good. These are still too tight. But anyway, harvesting kale, eating kale. Beets. These are beets that were planted really like end of April sort of thing. They're ready to be harvested. I can harvest them as I want them. The, uh, the, the, uh, you know, the, the actual beet itself. I don't know how you can see that. A couple things in the way here, but there we go. Not bad. That's about a two and a half inch right there. Um, that's not bad for, you know, for, for the beginning of July. That's pretty darn good. Rhubarb, I've, I, we've sort of been eating rhubarb so much that I'm sort of tired of it, so I'm just going to let 
leave the rhubarb alone and let it go, you know, through its through its seed and let it recharge. I just eating rhubarb pie and rhubarb crisp and rhubarb everything. <laughs> We're kind of done with that for now. <laughs> so leaving the rhubarb alone. Uh, this is a bed where I have uh, uh, parsnips planted, but I interplanted um, spinach in with the parsnips, you know, sort of every other row. And I'm just about done going through all of that. It's it's on the verge of bolting the spinach here. You can just sort of tell the leaves start getting a more triangular shape like this. And uh, and a little floret begins to form in there. A little flower begins to form. Uh, but these are still good for salads and stuff like that. But they'll be all gone in a matter of days. This is just one bed here. But i got lots of oregano in the garden. And it's just on the verge of flowering. So if it ever stops raining, I'm just waiting for it to stop raining. But i got to harvest this all and dry it out. Right? You don't want to let it go to flower. So, yeah, i got maybe three beds of oregano this size in the garden. They all need to be cut down and dried out. I should do a video on how I dry them, I suppose. I got a bed here of kale. This this kale was moved from another look from the other kale bed. I had that all 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 the kale was direct seeded in the other bed, and uh, I plucked these these ones out and made a row here and a row here. In the middle, I had this uh, sort of Japanese turnip type thing. I can never remember the name of it, but they're very good. I tried them last year and they tasted great. Uh, so uh, they're very uh the greens seem to be like the preferred thing of just about every i've never seen a green more aggressively attacked by slugs snails flea beetles you name it everything attacks these greens and the only way i could really uh, hold these off was to use the uh the safer zen doll that i like to use it's a insecticidal spray uh, potassium salts of fatty acids and um and uh what's that stuff called uh pyrethrin pyrethrin so two two active ingredients um, i'm totally cool with using that so yeah, look at the size of that one it's a three incher right but the only reason these survived is because i had to use that stuff when they were small i haven't used it here for weeks because the, the the greens are large enough that they can handle being like there's a slug right there they can handle being attacked now right but when they were tiny they were just getting wiped out i had to intervene but uh, other other than that, I haven't used anything on this garden at all. Of course, it needs a, a weeding, and this is a good day to do it because the flies aren't too bad and it's relatively cool. So I'll have to get out here and do some weeding and get a mulch on that. So, uh, hascap berries. Uh, for anyone thinking of planting these, this is year two and they produce, but they're all gone. They're all done. So they're basically, uh, if you're new to hascap berries, they're June bearing, and it's July now, and all the hascap berries I have have been harvested and eaten. So that's good in a way because most of your other berry bushes are July, August, even September, that sort of thing. So another good thing to add to your group. Finally, out here in the garden, we've got the uh, Swiss chard. These are all growing under just a little small two by two, you know, sort of box with, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, plastic on one side to let the heat through, like a little tiny cold frame, right? Tiny portable cold frame. Anyway, I separate them all and spread them out over this area. And uh, now we're pulling, you know, uh, you know, harvesting it a couple times a week. I take all the big leaves. That's basically it. A couple times a week, you know, this leaf, look at the size of this leaf. Six foot four man, that's the size of my hand, right? Anyway, once or twice a week, about twice a week, I come out here and take all the big leaves. And I'll be doing that until November. So, uh, yeah, I think I, for me, this is about a four by eight bed of Swiss chard. That's all the Swiss chard you need. <laughs> For me, anyway. <laughs> For the amount we like to eat. I guess if I'm doing state of the harvest, another thing I'm harvesting right now is herbs. And uh, I usually don't show this little herb garden too often, but this is close to the house. It's in the driveway. Uh, I noticed there was weeds growing here all the time. So I just dug holes. This used to be gravel. I just dug holes in the gravel, put soil in the holes, stuck herbs in the holes, put sand everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, boxed it in. Now it's paved. <laughs> so these grow they're perennial herbs. They grow uh, back every year. I got oregano here. Um, this was much larger last year. I basically pulled it out and cut it down so because it was just too big, uh, and gave away all the pieces to the neighbors and stuff. Oregano. Uh, I got a French tarragon there. Uh, sage. Uh, another kind of sage. Two different types of sage. Uh, winter savory. That's a great perennial. You know, if if, if you use savory for you know, baking and turkey and oh, you can use it for all kinds of things, right? But anyway, it's a lovely herb, tough, invincible, comes back every year, gets bigger and bigger. 
that's going to need to be pulled out and reduced next year. Uh, rosemary, it's the rosemary I left in the ground and uh, just put a little plastic dome over it for the winter. Uh, rosemary is a zone 8 perennial. I'm in zone 5B or 6A depending on you know how you shake it. Um, so rosemary is not su supposed to be able to overwinter here. Um, you know, I've tried leaving, this is so facing sometimes, you know, I've tried just leaving it here thinking maybe it's a special spot, <laughs> but it's not special. Every year I've left it here on cover, it's just, just died, right? So a plastic home over this, it, it, both, there's two plants here. It looks like one plant, but there's two next to each other. And, uh, it's come back so strong and so thick and so healthy. It's grown really good. And of course I got some, uh, thyme over here, which is great. So that's the, the driveway <laughs> herb garden, uh, which looks like it's sand, but there's soil underneath the sand. And, you know, because I haven't got an organic mulch here, I do uh, fertilize this once a year. Usually just some sort of, you know, uh, compost tea, that sort of thing, right? Um, that's all that's one good dose of that a year. Seems to keep, I mean, look how green that is. Look how healthy that looks, right? You know, this was plucked out of the ground and stuck back in in the spring. So is that. This was left alone. Look at it. <laughs> this was left alone. Look at it. <laughs> Look at that rosemary. And this time was about twice this size uh, a couple weeks ago. But I, I cut it all down, harvested all these, and dried them out because they were starting to flower. You can see there's still a couple of little, little flowers there. But basically, once you see your flowers starting to form, that's when you want to harvest your herbs and, and dry dry them out. Right. The flowers will just you'll end up having that herb everywhere, <laughs> places you don't want it. Although, there's really not, no such thing as too much time, in my opinion. Anyway, that's where we are, beginning of July 2021. Uh, plenty of things coming out of the garden, but in, a, in about a month or so, there's going to be a whole lot more coming out of the garden. Uh, catch up with me on my next garden tour, where I show the whole thing and talk about every single thing and the stage it's growing at, uh, if that's your sort of thing. <laughs> so, I uh, hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. Until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.